Good morning. Welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben, even though we're not live. Uh, St. Paul's Peloton begins today. We're about to head out to the trail um, with the kiddos. We, we have uh, 15 little riders signed up and we had to cap it. Um, it filled up so quickly. So I'm, I'm really excited to see what, what happens throughout this summer. Uh, and it looks like we're going to try to have uh, St. Paul's Peloton on the same day that we have VBS and kind of mingle them together see well we'll we'll try and plan it out but uh it's an exciting time to see if this is a need that that we can help fill in the community um and we can still do um live for five just not live um but let's make our beginning this morning in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen this is the day that the lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. If you pull out the YouVersion Bible app, our verse of the day takes us to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Uh, now, the first thing is, I, I don't really care for uh, ending our reading on the negative and, and just seeing the, the exhortation that Jesus gives in the Sermon on the Mount to, to not do this thing. It, I'm okay with starting with verse 19, but let's go to the positive because we got to think of what Jesus does want us to do. And that's in verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And then this is actually the kicker. I don't think we can study verse 19 without ending up in verse 21. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now, through Matthew 19 to verse 24, Jesus gives three short teachings, warning against idolatry, but particularly the seduction of stuff, of possessions. So consider the remarkable circumstances of Jesus' audience when he's saying this. As far as we can tell, most of his disciples did not have wealthy circumstances. The crowd that is listening to Jesus as he teaches his disciples are largely comprised of poor Palestinian farmers, peasants, and tradesmen. So this advice, this exhortation, this counsel from Jesus should be even more surprising Despite their poverty, this is such a universal truth, the lure of possessions, even for the poor, that even those who do not have many things must be warned and taught not to assign them a higher priority in their lives. Well, how much more then? Do Jesus' modern disciples, you and me, who are wealthy by historical standards, do we need to know how not to set our hearts on money or things? Because according to history and even world standards, we are wealthy. Accumulating quantities of stuff. These things are then what Jesus says, where your treasures on earth can be found. So Jesus explains where your treasure is, where the quantity of the things you accumulate are, that's where your heart will also be. The external choices that we make reveal the internal spiritual condition. So, 
It doesn't do me any good to insist that my heart is oriented correctly, even if I look as though I'm investing my life and energy in treasures that will rot and fail. The evidence that a person is bent on accumulating earthly treasures supports this conclusion. The man's heart is set on the wrong things. So instead, Jesus says, set your heart on things above, set your mind to things above. And this then causes us pause because we must consider what those things are, treasures in heaven. Now we know what these are. Jesus lays them out quite a bit in in chapter 5 of Matthew. But these are the eternal rewards that are free and cannot be taken away. This is why remembering your baptism is a great way to start the day. Remembering your sinful condition, but yet that Jesus has rectified that for you. There's a good way to start the day and to sprinkle it throughout the entire day. So that your mind is set on those eternal things. And you, the possessions may come and go. But it, your, your heart's not anchored in them. And this is a good thing to consider throughout the course of every day. Man, do we have so much to think about and pray about. Uh, the activity of the believer is without end. Because there's always something to be seeking from above. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, lead us to seek the things of heaven, the things that are above, the things that are eternal, that you have set before us, where Christ is seated at your right hand. Place those things on our hearts. Fill our hearts with those things so that we could also share those wonderful eternal blessings with those around us as well. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, the neat thing about this is then the, the stuff that you have becomes amazing tools for reaching other people to think on these things of above. Well, blessings to you this morning. I look forward to being live with you tomorrow, but this is a good placeholder uh, throughout the summer while we have St. Paul's Peloton. So I thank you for your patience. I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a blessed day in Christ.